Use the velocity time graph to determine the velocity at 5 seconds. The instantaneous velocity at 5 seconds, according to the graph, is 12.5 meters per second. What about the average velocity in the first 10 seconds? Well, again, the average velocity can be easily calculated by finding the total displacement divided by the total time. We are not provided with the total displacement directly, so we'll need to use the area under this velocity versus time graph to calculate the displacement. We can divide the graph into three areas or three parts. The first part is a trapezium, the second part is also a trapezium, and the third part is a rectangle. So area one is equal to half times by the height of the trapezium, which is four seconds, times by A, which is the shorter side, so that looks to me 17.5 meters per second, plus the longer side, which is B, so that's 20 meters per second. So this gives a displacement of 75 meters in the first four seconds. Area two is also a trapezium, so we use the four, same formula, half times by the height, which is two seconds, times by A, which is 7.5 meters per second, plus B, the longer side, that is 17.5 meters per second, and this gives a displacement of 25 meters. Finally, A3 is a rectangle, for which the area is simply the length, which is four seconds times by the width, which is 7.5 meters per second. And this gives a displacement of 30 meters. In total, the displacement is 130 meters, which means going back to my average velocity formula, the average velocity is 130 divided by 10 seconds, 13 meters per second. In a 100 meter sprint, an athlete reaches a maximum speed of 8 meters per second in 1.2 seconds, and then maintains the speed for the remaining of the race. What is the average speed in the first 1.2 seconds? Well, the average speed is given by the total displacement in the first 1.2 seconds divided by the time, which is 1.2 seconds. So we need to find how much displacement is actually traveled by the sprinter in the first 1.2 seconds. We can do this by first calculating the acceleration of the runner by using the kinematic equation V equals to U plus AT. We know the final velocity at the end of 1.2 seconds is 8 meters per second, and we know that the sprinter initially is at rest, so the initial velocity is 0, plus A times by a duration of 1.2 seconds. So the acceleration is equal to 6.67 meters per second squared. We can then find the displacement using the kinematic equation s is equal to ut plus half at squared. s is equal to 0 which is the initial velocity times by 1.2 plus half times by 6.67 times by 1.2 squared and this yields a displacement of 4.8 meters. This means the average velocity in the first 1.2 second is the displacement divided by the duration of time, which is 4 meters per second. All right, let's look at part B. What is the average speed of the athlete for the entire race? Again, our approach should be the same. Average velocity is a total displacement divided by the time. However, for this part of the question, we are actually given the total displacement, which is 100 meters, but we don't have the time. From part A, we already know that the sprinter travels 4.8 meters in the first 1.2 seconds and maintains a speed of 8 meters per second for the duration of the race. That means the time taken to complete the remaining part of the race is 100 meters minus 4.8 because that's how much distance is left over for the sprinter divided by a constant speed of 8 meters per second and this is 11.9 second so the sprinter takes 11.9 second to finish the remaining part of the race we can then use this time combined with the 1.2 second to calculate the average velocity so here the total displacement is 100 meters, 
divided by the total time of 1.2 second plus 11.9 second, which gives an average velocity of 7.63 meters per second. This is the average velocity for the entire 100 meters. A car accelerates from rest at 4 meters per second squared for 5 seconds, then travels at constant speed for another 10 seconds. What is the instantaneous velocity at t equals to 3? So t equals 3 is in the first 5 seconds. And this is when the car is accelerating. We can calculate the instantaneous velocity by using the equation v equals to u plus a t. Initial velocity is 0. The acceleration is 4 meters per second squared. And the time here we want to look at is 3 seconds. And this is 12 meters per second as the instantaneous velocity. All right, part B. What about the average velocity in the five seconds? We already said this many times that the average velocity is the total displacement divided by the total time in the first five seconds. Unfortunately, we don't have the total displacement, so we need to calculate that first. This can be easily done by using s is equal to u t plus half a t squared. u is zero, t is five seconds plus half, 4 times by 5 squared. So this gives a displacement of 50 meters. Therefore, the average velocity for the first 5 seconds is 50 meters divided by 5 seconds, which is 10 meters per second as the average velocity. What is the average speed for the entire 15 seconds? The average velocity is, again, equal to the total displacement divided by the total time. We know the total time is 15 seconds, but we do not know the total displacement. In part B, we've already calculated the displacement in the first 5 seconds, so we just need to calculate what the displacement was for the 10 seconds that followed. Because the car was traveling at constant speed, if we can find this constant speed, we can simply multiply by 10 seconds to find the displacement. The final speed depended on the final velocity at the end of the five seconds because it accelerated for four minutes per second squared for five seconds. This means V is equal to U plus A T, zero plus four times by five, and the final velocity was 20 minutes per second. So the car maintained a constant speed of 20 minutes per second for 10 seconds. This means the displacement traveled in the 10 second was 20 meters per second times by 10 seconds and that is 200 meters. 200 meters plus 50 meters that is a total displacement of 250 meters and we divide this by the total time which was 15 second and this yields an average velocity of 16.7 meters per second. A car initially traveling at 16 meters per second begins to accelerate through a set of traffic lights at 5 meters per second squared for 2 seconds. Then the driver brakes to allow the car to uniformly decelerate to 12 meters per second over 4 seconds. What is the instantaneous speed at t equals to 3? Now, we need to first identify what interval of motion is t3, where does it fall under? Does it fall under the initial acceleration or does it for under the deceleration that followed. So we see that it accelerated for two seconds. That means at t equals to three, it would have been during the deceleration phase. So we know the car in the very, very beginning had a velocity of 16 minutes per second. It accelerated for five minutes per second squared for two seconds. That means the final velocity at the end of the two second is 16 plus 5 times by 2, which is 26 meters per second. So this is the first interval of motion. After two seconds, the driver then brakes to cause deceleration. And the deceleration went from 26 meters per second to a final velocity of 12 meters per second over the duration of four seconds. Notice how in the first interval, 26 is my final velocity, 
But once I start analyzing this in a second interval where there's deceleration, it becomes my initial velocity. So a is equal to v minus u, the change in velocity over time. I can calculate the acceleration by finding a difference in velocity. So 12 minus 26 divided by 4, which is minus 3.5 meters per second squared. So this is the second interval. I need to find the acceleration for the second interval in order to find the instantaneous velocity at 3 seconds. This is done by using the equation v equals to u plus at again. v is the velocity at 3 seconds and u here is 26 minutes per second plus the acceleration of minus 3.5 minutes per second squared. Now, even though I'm finding the instantaneous velocity at 3 seconds, for t here, I actually put down as 1 second because t equals to 3 is exactly 1 second after t equals to 2. This is when the driver starts to break. So just to clarify, the initial velocity of 26 meters per second, this happened at t equals to 2. And if we want to find t equals to 3, this is exactly 1 second after the 26 meters per second and one second after the driver has braked. So the instantaneous velocity here is equal to 22.5 meters per second. Part B, what is the average speed over the entire six seconds? So again, average velocity is equal to the total displacement over the time. We know the time is six seconds. We need to find the total displacement. Now, because there are two different parts of motion, the first part involving acceleration and the second part involving deceleration, we have to calculate displacement separately. The displacement of the first part is given by ut plus half at squared. u is 16, t is 2 seconds, and a is 5 minutes per second, and t here again is 2 seconds squared. This is a displacement of 42 meters. We can use the same equation to calculate the displacement of the second part of the motion. Here, my initial velocity was actually 26 as calculated in part A. 26 is the final velocity at the end of the first part of the motion, which is also the initial velocity of the second part of the motion. Time here is 4 seconds, as given by the question, plus half. Acceleration was minus 3.5 meters per second squared as calculated in part A. Time here is 4 squared. This is a displacement of 76 meters, which means the total displacement is 42 plus 76, which is 118 meters. We'll then use this total displacement to find the edge velocity, 180 meters divided by a total of 6 seconds. And this gives an average velocity of 19.7 meters per second. This concludes the video on instantaneous and average velocity.